Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. Not 100% sure what we're going to do in this video, uh, but I figured I owed everyone a video. It's been a bit over a week. Uh, I've been meaning to make a video. I've got so many things to do. But look, I've got, uh, got some stuff that arrived, and I thought, well, I need to do a video, and I've got stuff that's arrived, so today we're just going to do a little bit of a um, mail call and see what's turned up in the mail. Um, I'm having all sorts of problems with my computers, uh, a lot of hard drive errors. Um, it's difficult to determine how serious they are. Um, anyway, I, I found myself um, buying new ones. I, I had this terrible experience with some Western Digital purples. They were like ATA drive locked, and I didn't know the password, and I couldn't use them. And my uh, PNY M2 SSDs are uh, not inspiring me with confidence that the, the ZFS file system uh, got a whole lot of re checksum errors, actually. Uh, so I got a bunch of these Western Digital Black um, SSDs, um, which I'm hoping to use instead. So I'm going to have to read all the few computers using these Western Digital Blacks. Now, Western Digital Black is a pretty reliable product line, as I understand it. So um, that should be a bit better. Uh, today's silly job title is the Ohm Oracle. I'm the Ohm Oracle. And the book for today is Electric Circuits by J. Richard Johnson. J. Richard Johnson, published by the Hayden Book Company, a division of Hayden Publishing Company, Incorporated. Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey. So this was from America, published by Hayden, written by J. Richard Johnson. I'll tell you what, let's jump over to the uh, bench and have a look at this guy, and then we'll get on with the mail call. And you know, that might be it, but we'll see. I've got two other things that I, or, that I might do. Three, in fact. I've still got to put my um, capacitor discharge circuit into its box, so that's to do. We could do that today. Um, the other thing uh, that we could do is my mate River on IRC from the UK uh, needs a uh, JST XH connector cable that's 50 centimeters long, and he doesn't own a crimping tool. Um, I found this old cable, which I could sell, use to make such a cable, but I could probably even do better and maybe just use an old Ethernet cable or something rather than tearing this guy up. So that's something else we could do. And of course, in the mail call today, we'll see the, um, the first batch of printed circuit boards from PCBWay. Um, if you're new, you might not have heard that PCBWay have offered to sponsor my video blog um, and send me uh, free print printed circuit boards. So that's pretty great. And they cover the, the costs of manufacturing costs, but they also cover the shipping costs, which is really convenient for me. It means I can get printed circuit boards, custom made, for free, and all I have to do is tell you about it. So I, uh, I, I got my first um, batch arrived over here, and that'll be part of the mail call today. Um, anyway, I want to have a look at this book, so let's do that first. And then, um, oh, that's not what we want. There we go. Um, after we've looked at the, at the book, we'll um, uh, uh, pop out our mail and see what's arrived. So, this is Electric Circuits by Richard Johnson. Now, I thought this was fun. It says, it looks like it says reviewed in February 1988. This is old. Uh, it says review, I think it says that the reviewer was JC, and it's, a, it's got a note to see the books file, which is hilarious. This is from February 88, so the, the, the books file, the, the air quotes books file, would have been like a text file on a floppy disk, um, and that's, that's the way things were done back in 1988, if you were lucky, yeah. So the books file would have been on a, on a floppy disk probably, or maybe a hard disk, probably a floppy disk. Uh, again, the title, Electric Circuits. Uh, again with the publisher. All right, now there was a bunch of editors, an art director, a fair few people involved in this book. Copyright 1984. Fascinating. This is the preface. It begins, this is a book for first year electrical electronics technology students in community colleges, junior colleges, and technical institutes. So this is a how-to book for technical vocational training. Uh, J, J. Richard Johnson has some acknowledgements, and then we're into the contents. Let's see what this baby's all about. So we've got electricity and the structure of matter, molecules, atoms, electrons, and electric charge, electron energy levels and shells, valence electrons and free electrons, more about electric charges, Coulomb's law, electric current, current sense, electric potential, and voltage. Then we've got the next uh, section, I guess you call it, is Ohm's law and electrical units, scientific notation, charge transfer and current, prefix units and conversions of units, Working problems with prefix, prefixed units, Ohm's law, schematic diagrams and electric circuits, prefixed units for voltage and resistance, voltage drop, additional consideration in use of Ohm's law, the MKSA system of units, electric current and the ampere, other MKSA electrical units. Then in section three, resistance and conductance. We've got resisti resistance and the atomic theory. We've got resistivity. We've got circular mill unit area. 
We've got circular mill foot unit for resi resi eh, resistivity. We've got dimensions and units of resi resistivity. We've got temperature scales, relation between temperature and resistance, use of the temperature coefficient of resistance, combining resistivity and temperature effect, conductance, conductivity, superconductivity, conductance and Ohm's law, current density, wire, resistors, nonlinear resistances, conduction in electrolytes. And in section four, energy and power, work, power and energy in mechanics, electric power, energy, conservation of energy, electric power and the what, mechanical and thermal equivalence, efficiency, electric energy, power ratings of resistors. Section five is simple series circuits. Series circuit, definition and voltage relations. Current in a series circuit, total resistance of a series circuit, voltage division, voltage dividers, graphical solution of series circuit, power in a series circuit. Section six, simple parallel circuits. Voltages in a parallel circuit, total current in a parallel circuit, total resistance in a parallel circuit, use of conductance in parallel circuits, current distribution in parallel circuits, parallel circuit currents by proportionate parts, power in parallel circuits, application of parallel circuits. Section seven is complex networks and Kirchhoff's laws. Series parallel circuit and its equivalence resistance, currents and voltages in series parallel circuits, power in series parallel circuits, loaded voltage dividers, Kirchhoff laws, circuit mesh solution, loop current solution, node method of network solution, use of determinants in network solutions, networks with more than one EMF. I believe EMF is electromagn mag uh, electromagnetic force, mm, which basically probably means battery, I'm not sure. Section eight is DC network theorems, load, internal resistance, and maximum power transfer. Thevenin's theorem, Norton's theorem, conversion between the Thevenin and Norton equivalents. I didn't really understand that, did you? It's, uh, conversion between Thevenin and Norton equivalents. Hmm. Sounds pretty technical. Constant voltage generators versus constant current generators. Millman's theorem, the superposition theorem, the reciprocity theorem, the delta Y transformation, and other theorems. Goes on section nine, capacitance and capacitors. Basic nature of capacitance, electrical nature of capacitance, rate of change relationship in a capacitance, the unit of capacitance, the farad, factors influencing capacitance, electric field and charge in a capacitor, electric fields and the dielectric, time constant, the exponential function, the exponential function in capacitors, energy stored in a capacitor, capacitors in series and parallel, series parallel combinations of capacitances, types of practical capacitors. Section 10, magnetism and electromagnetism. Magnets, lines of force, electromagnetic induction, magnetic flux, forces between fields and currents, definition of ampere. Magnetomotive force, electromagnets, the magnetic circuit, reluctance, permeance, reluctivity and permeability, quantity relationships in a magnetic circuit, magnetizing force and flux density, VH relationships, incremental permeability and the derivative, hysteresis, Magnetism and the structure of matter, paramagnetism and diamagnetism, permanent magnets, magnetism and superconductivity, ferrites. Section 11, inductance and inductors. Basic nature of inductance. Counter electromagnetic, uh, counter electromotive force. The unit of inductance, the Henry. Factors influencing inductance. Resistance and capacitance in inductors. Time constant. Use of exponential function in time constant problems. Energy in an inductance. Connecting separate inductors, mutual inductances. Section 12, sources of electromotive force. Generation of an EMF. Chemical battery, chemical battery cell operation. Types of primary cells, secondary cells. Electrical characteristics of batteries. Voltage, current, capacity, temperature. Generated voltage and internal resistance. Connecti connecting battery cells in series. Battery cells in parallel. Connecting battery cells in series parallel. Solar cells, fuel cells, the electromagnetic generator, field coil, coils and poles, electrical characteristics of armatures, AC generators, types of generator connections, power supplies. Section 13 is DC electrical measurements. The moving coil to Asnaval meter movement. Characteristics of basic DC meter movement. Increasing current ranges with shunts. Use of current meter for measuring voltage. Effective meter resistance on circuits. Resistance by voltmeter, ammeter. 
Resistance measurement by ohmmeter. Measuring resistance with a Wheatstone bridge. Volt ohm millimeter, milliameter. <laughs> Volt ohm milliameter. <laughs> Electronic meters, digital meters. Section 14, sine wave forms. The sine function, the sine wave form. Characteristics of the sine wave. Cycle, period, frequency, and phase. Phase of a sine wave. Average value of a sine wave. Effective, RMS, value of a sine wave. Angle measurements in radians. The equation of a sinusoidal voltage or current. Cosine wave. Other trigonometric functions. Section 15. Complex algebra and electric vectors. Definition of a vector. Symbols for vectors of electrical quantities. Conversion between polar and rectangular forms. Addition of vectors. Subtraction of vectors. Some properties of operator J. Multiplication of vectors. Division of vector quantities. Powers and roots for vectors. Section 16. Basic AC circuits. AC voltage and alternating current. Alternating current in a resistive circuit. Alternating current sense and phase reference. Inductive re reactance. Impedance in an inductive circuit. Capacitive reactance. Impedance in a capacitive circuit. Impedance in circuits containing inductance and capacitance. Reactance coordinate coordinates for voltage and current. I'm sorry, look. Rectangular coordinates for voltage and current. Peak and RMS values of rectangular components. Ohm's law for AC circuits. Series AC circuits. Vector and phase diagrams. Parallel AC circuits. Admittance and susceptance. Circle diagrams. Section 17. AC network theorems and bridge circuits. Thevenin's and Norton's theorems. Superposition in AC circuits. AC bridges. Similar angle bridge. Opposite angle bridge. YN bridge. Radio frequency bridge. Section 18. Power in AC circuits. Power in a resistive AC circuit. Power considerations for an inductance. Power considerations for a capacitance. Peak and average power. Power in a resistance or reactance. Other forms of power equations. Power in circuits containing resistance and reactance. Apparent power, reactive power, and power factor. Power factor correction. Section 19. Resonance. Definition of series resonance. Equation for series circuit resonance. Voltages and currents in a series resonance circuit. Parallel resonance by varying L or C. Parallel resonance, qualitative discussion. Par parallel resonance, mathematical analysis. Parallel RLC circuit at resonance, unity power factor. Parallel RLC circuit, condition for maximum impedance. Parallel resonance by varying L or C. High Q parallel resonance circuit impedance and circuits. Section 20. Simple linear circuits and non-sinusoidal voltages. Adding sine waves of different frequencies. Introduction to Fourier series. Graphical methods for deriving non-sinusoidal waveform equations. Representations of typical functions. Effective values, power, and power factor in circuits with non-sinusoidal waveforms. Simple waveforms applied to RC networks. Low-pass and high-pass filters. Simple RL circuits. RC slash RL circuits and time constants. Response of RL circuit to square wave. Differentiating and integrating networks. More about time constants. Sawtooth waveform. Reconciling harmonic content and transient analysis. Section 21, polyphase circuits. The polyphase principle. Three-wire single-phase system. Polyphase connections and notations. The Y connection. The delta connection. The Y delta connection. Unbalanced loads. Phase sequence. Power in three-phase systems. Power measurement in three-phase systems. Two watt meter method with unbalanced load summary. Section 22, transformers. The ideal close couples transformer. Polarity, phase, and winding sense. Reflected impedance. Practical effects in transformers. The equivalent circuit of a transformer. Materials, construction, and effects of cause. Transformers with more than one secondary. Auto transformer. Tests for transformer characteristics. Coupled circuit impedance. Coupled resonant circuits, critical coupling. Close coupling case, derivation from general expressions. Section 23, AC electrical measurements. AC measurements by rectifier meters. AC measurements by thermocoupled devices. AC measures, uh, the AC measurements, other methods. Watt meters, impedance bridge, frequency meter, oscilloscope, the Zhao's figures, wave analyzer. Appendix one. Values of exponential functions. 
Appendix 2, Units. History and derivation of systems of electrical units and unit conversions. Appendix 3, Mathematics. Review of determinants, transients in an inductance, transients in a capacitance, energy stored in an inductance, energy stored in a capacitance, average value of a sine wave voltage, root mean square value of a sine wave voltage, reactance, frequency for maximum parallel resonance impedance. Answers to odd number questions. Okay, so this has obviously got questions, and uh, they give you the answers at, at the end of the book. Um, I'm not sure what this is. This is just the beginning of the book, chapter one. Well, let's read this. Uh, this. It says, uh, in the years since Ben Franklin and his kite, so much has been learned about electricity that a clear understanding of its universal applications in electric power distribution, communications, entertainment, computers, medicine, and many other fields can be derived only by studying fundamental electrical principles. This book is devoted to the study of these principles in the most logical, interesting, and challenging manner. One of the basic things we know about electricity is that it is related closely to the fundamental structure of matter. We know that matter is made up of small particles of various types and that some of their motions and arrangements are the essence of electrical effects. Accordingly then, this first chapter starts with a discussion of the rudiments of atomic structure and the relationship of atoms to electricity. You will find an understanding of these rudiments of great value throughout your study of electricity. Fascinating. Now what are we going to do? I mean, it took us a while to get through that table of contents, didn't it? I'm not sure how interested people are in this sort of thing. I, for one, am very interested in knowing the scope of these old books and what, what I might be able to find in them. Of course, I haven't got enough time to go through the whole book right now. I thought I might, uh, I might jump up to page 851 and let's read about the history and derivation of systems of electrical units because that's only one page and it sounds a bit interesting. I'll look open right on the page. must be my lucky day. So, history and derivation of systems. History and, deri uh, history and derivation of systems of electrical units. Just let me caffeinate before I read this out. Ah, oh, that's better. As far as the beginning of the 19th century, experimenters and scientists started to work for, for a system of units badly needed for both practical use and for scientific development. With the development of the telegraph, which was patented in 1840, uses of electricity started to increase and the demand for consistent, reliable and convenient units became even greater. Real attempts at standardisation seem to have been started in 1861 by the British Association for the Advancement of Science which appointed a committee on electrical standards. Since 1881, the refinement of systems of units has advanced through a series of international congresses whose organizational structure evolved into what is now known as the International Electrotechnical Commission, the IEC. The NKSA system of units used in this book was recommended by the IEC and designated the SI system and has been adopted by the US Bureau of Standards and the foremost electrical and electronics professional societies. The IEC SI system has been explained in chapter two. Since the student may have to deal with any of three other systems as well, a brief explanation of each follows. The practical system, also known as the Joule system, was developed by engineers and experimenters. It sets up the Joule, equal 10 to the power of 7 ergs, as the unit of energy, and the ampere, equal to 0.1 CGS electromagnetic unit, as the unit of current. The international system is derived as an elaboration of the practical system by the setting up of physical standards for the ampere and the ohm. The ampere is defined as that current that deposits silver from a silver nitrate solution at the rate of 0.0011180 grams per second. The ohm is defined as the resistance of a uniform column of pure mercury 106.3 centimeters long and weighing 14.4521 grams, that is, having a cross-sectional area of one square millimeter. Later, careful measurements indicated that these units differ slightly from the practical units. One international ampere, or coulomb, is 0.999835 practical ampere, or coulomb and one international ohm is 1.000495 practical ohms. The practical electrical units are the ones that evolved into the electrical units of the MKSA system. There are two major CGS systems. One is based on the definition of an ampere in terms of the magnetic force it generates with another identical electric current, electromagnetic CGS system. And the other is based on the definition of the Coulomb, of the Coulomb terms of the electrostatic force between two equal charges. CGS electrostatic system. There are basically uh, these are basically mechanically derived systems set up in 1863, although they were later tied into the practical electric unit, electrical units, as already explained. There we go. And then there's a there's a, there's a, a table here for unit conversions between uh, the NKSA, the CGS ES, and the CGS EM. <clears throat> okay. So there you go. Anyway, that's uh, that's just a matter for history, really, isn't it? There's more conversions over here on this page.
And then there was the mathematics came after it. Look at that. Review of determinants. A little bit of calculus there. Fascinating. All right, anyway. That concludes our investigation of electric circuits by J. Richard Johnson, published in 1984. Very interesting book. And I might as well pop you back over here so we can pop out our loot. It's over here. So let's see what we got. I'm uh, in the process of fixing up my computer network. It's, it's all a bit up in the air at the moment. And I've got backups rattling away over there. So once the backups are done, I'm going to rebuild the computer. Um, we'll see how that goes. Oh, okay, cool. Well, what these are is um, 256 gig M2 NVMe SSDs. They're only 256 gigs. They're very small as far as SSDs go. But not only are they small, they're cheap. I paid Aussie bucks, ten dollars, uh, twenty dollars each. So. Not very much did I pay. This is them. I'll show you over here on the, on the bench. So, uh, I'll get rid of that. That light, we don't need that one. All right. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Like me, I'm five. I'm John, John, JJ5. So, um, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. And these are um, Kioxia, which is a Toshiba brand, maybe? Uh, I forget. Anyway, um, uh, Kioxia. Uh, PCIe 4, which is good, 256 gigabytes, which is uh, not very much, uh, 2280, which is just the standard size that you tend to see, uh, M2 NVMe. So that's what these are. And the reason I got them is to stick as caches in front of my ZFS spinning rust disks, because those disks are really slow, and they can do with a bit of a cache, and these are a good cheap way to put a cache in front of a ZFS um, uh, uh, Z pool, I guess you'd have to say, yeah. So that's what those are. I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to keep these things yet. Um, but they were cheap, and I got five of them, 20 bucks each, 100 bucks. Um, and I, uh, I did, did actually just want to have a few on standby in case I end up with uh, some sort of corruption that I need to recover from. I'll put them in there, huh? Oh, speaking of stuff in here, I got these cool things the other day. Put you back over here. Um, these are just uh, these are M2 heat sinks. So those drives that I just showed you, um, you can stick these heat sinks over them and keep them cool. So I've got a couple of those as well. Got to remember to keep uh, keep moving the cameras around when I move around. Um, so what's next? All right. Uh, yes. So uh, this was purchased uh, back at the uh, AliExpress sales that they were having recently. And these are actually just um, fuses. And these are the kind of uh, fuses that you typically see. They're called automotive because you usually use these kind of blade fuses um, in a car. So these are automotive fuses. Just have a look at them together over here. All right. So, this is them. I'm not sure what that is. That's uh, some sort of a clip. Maybe you use that for pulling them out. You probably do. You just put the clip on and then pull. Yeah, that's how that works. Oh, that's good to know. So I got myself a little a little clip uh, for picking them out. And uh, yeah. so uh, I also have some wires that uh, accept these. You can just plug them in. So. Um, if I uh, blow them, I can just throw them out and replace them. So that's all that is, and the only real reason I got them is because they were super cheap, and it was a good diversity of fuses um, with different uh, current ratings. So, um, yeah, just to have on hand, because it's the sort of thing that you might need in a pinch. Ah, and I got more of these. I'll show you these. Actually, um, uh, they're, they're uh, these um, clips, <coughs> which uh, I don't need to open. If you've uh, been watching my videos, you'll have seen this before. I've got a couple of them sitting up the back here because I intend to do a demo of them uh, when I make the circuit uh, that I need to do the demo. So, um, yeah, you, you basically uh, you push this in and the little prong comes out. So they're, they're test clips for hooking onto um, te test clips for hooking onto uh, the components on on a circuit board. So you can connect your uh, your multimeter or your uh, or your oscilloscope or whatever. That's pretty good that they come with some uh, some Dupont cables. That's a nice touch. So these are some female to female to pont, very nice. And this is the manual, also very nice. Um, and then we might as well pop them all out, hey? Let's do it together. I tell you, I could do some more light. Let's try that. Yeah, that's good for me. It's not so good for you because you get a little bit of glare on some of them, reflections. Anyway, now it's all the same, 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 same. So I got heaps of test clips now. I should not need any more anytime soon. 
What do you reckon? Set for life, maybe. All right. Well, I'll just file this stuff. I've got one, two, three sets of probes, and uh, I'll put them in my lucky probes tray. It looks like that. As you can see, I've already got some of these babies. I've got other ones that are a different shape. I've got all sorts of stuff in here, actually. All sorts of probes and, and probes and probes. Anyway, there we go. That's what, that's what that is. Back. And I might as well show you my uh, collection of DuPont cables. These particular ones are uh, female to female. So here are my female to female DuPonts. And now I've got a swag more of them. So that's good. And uh, this is just trash. And I'll keep those. I'll file them away. All right. And the next bag, let's switch over here. We'll do this one together. Uh, You know, if you're putting an um, electronics lab together for yourself, get yourself these good scissors. You use them all the time. One of the most important things you can have in your lab is a good pair of scissors. These ones are first class. They're made out of titanium, I believe. They're super sharp and uh, very useful. What have we got here? Awesome. This is a book. It's arrived from Victoria. Interesting. It might have actually come internationally. I'm not sure. So this is the uh, book that I bought through the Amazon uh, marketplace. Oh dear. I'm trying to preserve the uh, the bubble wrap, but perhaps I shouldn't worry about that. What do you reckon? Yeah, I'm just going to throw this particular bunch of bubble wrap away. But what about if I just cut it along here? Ah. Oh. You know, I don't like uh, cutting things. I, I have a rule of thumb. You might have heard it yourself. It's uh, never cut what can be untied. I do try to stick to that as kind of a general uh, guiding sort of principle. Uh, anyway, we're almost there. Sorry for just struggling here. That's bent him over. All right. At long last, the book which has arrived is... SCSI bus and IDE interface. This is the SCSI bus and IDE interface. Fascinating, because as I understand it, IDE and SCSI are two separate, different things. Um, this comes with, that's great, this comes with disk included. That's not a CD-ROM, that's a floppy disk. Wow. Let's jump over to the bench, have a look at this baby together. Wow, how awesome is this? So, um, let's open him up. How could we say no? I think there's a floppy disk in here, wow. So I'm not sure how we open this thing. It's funny, I almost don't want to open it because, wow, it's so old. Yeah. I don't know how we open it. It sort of seems to be all stitched up, doesn't it? How do we open this guy? I don't know. I just don't. I don't want to do any harm. You know, I've got a little bit of a, uh, a scalpel here, so let's just, uh, just cut this open. Oh, boy. Alright, well, I do feel like this is a little bit of sacrilege actually opening this thing, but the truth is, I want to read it, I want to know about the SCSI bus, and particularly the IDE interface, um, which is what they would have called the ATA protocol back in the 80s when this thing was made, I think, although I don't know for sure, which is why I wanted to buy the book, and in the back of the book, wow, it's a floppy disk, that is so cool, isn't it, wow, <laughs> yeah, this is Addison Wesley, Disk to Accompany the SCSI Bus and IDEA Interface Protocols, Applications and Programming. Second edition, Friedhelm Schmidt. Wow. Oh, fascinating. 1998. I would have thought that it was all CD-ROMs by 1998. But here we are with a floppy disk. I'm going to have to get myself a floppy disk drive. Wow. I hope you can get them via USB these days. We'll see. Great. Well, I wasn't planning to, but why wouldn't we... Um, why don't we have a look at this one together? Let's have a look, huh? So this is a uh, second edition, SCSI bus and IDEA interface, protocols, applications, and programming by Friedhelm Schmidt. All right. Uh, Addison Wesley is a publisher. Published in 1998. I was uh, in high school. This is the preface. The SCSI bus and IDEA interface are without question the two most important interfaces for computer peripherals in use today. Prefa preface to the second edition. More than four years have passed since the first edition of this book, but nevertheless, the book is still of immediate interest. Let's go through the contents together. So we've got the preface and the preface to the second edition. We've got part one, introduction. 
computers and peripherals, mass storage, peripheral interfaces, traditional peripheral interfaces, the RS-232 serial interface, the Centronics printer interface, hard disks and their interfaces, SD-506, computer buses, characteristics of buses, specialized buses, part two, the IDE interface, background, the origin of IDE, overview, documentation, the physical IDE interface, the electrical interface, timing specifications, IDE protocol, the register model of the IDE controller, command execution, power up or hardware reset, the model of an IDE distro, organization of the medium, defect management, the sector buffer, power conditions, IDE commands, mandatory commands, optional commands, the ATAPI interface, ATAPI architecture, ATAPI transport mechanism, ATAPI transport protocol, ATAPI commands, CD-ROM command packets. Part 3, the SCSI bus. Introduction, the evolution of SCSI. Overview, documentation, SCSI architecture, the SCSI architecture model, the SCSI command model, exceptions and error handling, task management, task set management, SCSI primary commands, the SCSI command, sorry, the SCSI target model, command structure, commands for all SCSI devices, mode parameter pages for all device types, the model of a SCSI processor device, commands for processor devices, block oriented devices, the model of a SCSI disk drive, hard disk commands, mode parameter pages for disk drives, the SCSI model of optical storage and worm drives, commands for optical storage and worm drives, mode parameters for optical storage and worm drives, stream oriented devices, the model of a SCSI tape drive, commands for tape devices, mode parameters for tape devices, the model of a SCSI printer, printer commands, mode parameters for printers, the model of a SCSI communications device, commands for SCSI communications devices, mode parameter pages for communications devices, graphics devices, the model of a SCSI scanner, SCSI scanner commands, mode parameters for SCSI for scanners, medium changer devices, the model of a SCSI medium changer device, commands for medium changes, mode parameter pages for medium changes, storage array controllers, the model of a SCSI storage array, commands for storage array controllers, mode parameter pages for storage array controllers, multimedia devices, the model of a SCSI CD-ROM drive, commands for CD-ROMs, audio commands for CD-ROMs, mode parameters for CD-ROMs, CD recorders, commands for CD recorders, the parallel SCSI interface, overview, SCSI signals, cables and connectors, single-ended SCSI, differential SCSI, low voltage differential, LVD, SCSI expanders, SCSI bus phases, the service model, synchronous transfers for fast SCSI, ultra SCSI or fast 20, ultra 2 SCSI or fast 40, and more, wide SCSI, scan, plug and play SCSI, SCSI interlock protocol, the message system, I.O. processes or tasks, SCSI pointers, disconnect, reconnect, freeing the bus, transfer options, tagged queues, termination of I.O. processes, error handling in the message system, asynchronous event notification, the new SCSI 3 interfaces, fundamental problems of the parallel SCSI interface, fiber channel, from fiber channel to SCSI 3, the fiber channel protocol, FCP, Firewire, IEEE P1394, from P1394 to SCSI 3, the Serial Bus Protocol, SBP, SSA, from SSA to SCSI 3, the Serial Storage Protocol, SSP, the ASPI Software Interface, the concept of ASPI, SCSI Request Blocks, ASPI Initialization and Function Calls, the SCSI Monitor Program, Measuring and Testing, SCSI Analyzers, SCSI Emulators, Examples from Industry, SCSI Chips, the NCR 5385, PC host adapters, future domain TMC950, PCI bus to fast 20, Symbios logic, Sim 53C860. Appendix A is the SCSI 2 commands by opcode. Appendix B is the SCSI 2 commands alphabetically. Appendix C is the SCSI 2 sense codes. Appendix D is the SCSI bulletin board. Appendix E is the source code for scan SCSI.pass. That's a Pascal code, that's great. Uh, Appendix F, addresses of manufacturers and organizations. Then there's a glossary and an index. Wow. And the first sentence of chapter one. A computer can be broken down into a number of interdependent functional blocks. The most important of these are the central processing unit, main memory, I.O., and mass storage. And on we go.
So I'm definitely looking forward to uh, having a close look at the details of this book, particularly with regards to the IDE stuff, not so much the SCSI stuff, although I'm interested in all of it. And I think that is so cool that I've got a floppy disk and I need to get a floppy disk drive so I can have a look at it. Um, if anyone knows how to read an old floppy drive, presumably it's formatted for DOS, you know, feel free to let me know. I'm not going to investigate that anytime soon because I'm busy. I'm busy, busy. Um, and uh, and I, I, won't be, uh, I won't be spending money for a bit either because <laughs> I've, uh, I've spent a bit of money on all this stuff which has arrived here today. Now, um, there's just one more thing to do. Oh, see if I can get this off here. Goodbye. Um, is to unpack our um, uh, our printed circuit boards, which have arrived. So let's do that. Uh, and I'm going to call today. I'm just going to call today a mail call. We're not going to do any of those other things that we could do. I'll do them in another video down the track. Um, let me show you these. I haven't seen them myself yet. I've, I've been waiting uh, to have a look at this stuff. Uh, it arrived from DHL. DHL is expensive but fast, so that was pretty cool. They got here real quick. They didn't need to get here real quick, but they did, so that's nice. As I mentioned earlier, these are from PCBWay, a Chinese company that prints circuit boards for you and has a whole bunch of other services, I might add. Um, and uh, I heard from their uh, marketing department. They like to look at my blog, so they wanted to sponsor me. Isn't that great? Um, and this is the first package that I got from them. I didn't design these circuits. I found them in the marketplace there. You can... Uh, yeah, at, at PCB way you can upload your own um, uh, circuits and then share them, uh, and other people can find your circuits. And if people find your circuits and have them printed, uh, you get a bit of a kickback. I mean, it wouldn't be a lot of money, but that's pretty cool, isn't it? So I found some uh, PCBs that someone else had designed, and I just had them printed because all I wanted was a five 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 timer. And of course, you know, there was a lot of options because it's the sort of thing everyone does, don't they? An educational uh, sort of thing. One of your one of your rites of passage is to make a circuit with a five 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 timer. All right. Well, I have to say, um, this is great. Very professional um, packaging. Excellent, can't fault it. Well done, PCB way. Their, uh, their thing is prototype the easy way. There you go. They do uh, uh, PCB, they do PCB printing, they do assembly, they do 3D printing, and they do CNC machining. So you can have pretty much anything made from these guys and they'll, they'll make it. 3D printing, uh, CNC cutting, excellent. Um, I'll, I'll, maybe, uh, I'll maybe try some of their services beyond just the printed circuit boards at some point, let you know how I go with those as well. Let's jump you over to the bench again. Put away our great new book, which I'm super happy to have. I'll uh, I'll link you to that book in the in the notes. Um, this is the bag full of circuits. Um, I'll just use this little blade here. Cut that open. Oh boy. All right. Well, I have to say uh, I'm a noob at PCB way, so I just uh. Um, just went with all the defaults on my order. So uh, the color and the, the silver screen and all of those details are all um, just whatever the defaults were. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. This is, uh, uh, he's put his uh, URL on the, on the circuit board. Uh, Egitim Tasti, I wonder where he's from. Uh, Bassett Electronic Project, all the blocks off. Anyway, I might as well, uh, I'll link you to this guy's, um, I'll link you to this guy's uh, blog. Um, in the in the description for this video, uh, which is he's printed out on the board, so presumably he doesn't mind. And uh, yeah, I've got five of these babies, so um, we'll plug in some components soon, and we'll we'll uh, we'll do a video uh, making a five 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 timer circuit out of these uh, printed circuits. And that might bring us to the end of today's video. Yeah, all it was really today was a mail call. We had a look at two books. Uh, I I, uh, I uh, I'm the Ohm Oracle. Uh, soon I have to replace this uh, computer. I've got to replace a motherboard. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do that on camera or not. Maybe I could do it on this table here and we can see how we go. I'm a bit nervous about having to do the motherboard because I haven't done one uh, for a long, long time. And uh, I just don't like fiddling around with the front panel, you know, like USB front panel wiring and the power, power, you know, jumpers and all that. Anyway, that's probably what I have to do. So um, I think that brings us to the end of the video for today. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.